Hello and welcome to another edition of UFO Video Addicts. Let me give you a preview of what I got coming up in this video. Let's see, the first is a strange light over this hill. Not too sure where this is taken from. Uh, let's see, also got this uh, UFO over Miami. Uh, this one is kind of hard to see, but you're going to see a little small UFO out here taken from this plane. Also have this uh, video out of Japan of this uh, strange orb floating in the sky. Uh, let's see, this is an older video of uh, this guy that um, worked in the defense industry. He worked for the Department of Defense and uh, he came home and saw this uh, object hovering over his sky. Also have this video of a, uh, I mean, what this guy is saying, it's a mothership in a storm. I mean, there's a uh, one clip where, where you're, the lightning goes off and you can actually see this entire ship. Also have this um, older video, I'm pretty sure I've played this before, of a UFO over Cuba. And then the last two are um, more sightings, um, like, you know, in our ancient past. But this is about some sightings that happened, I think it was in um, 1679 in Ireland. And then and the last one here is about a possible UFO sighting in uh, 1767 in Scotland. So, you know, like uh, Lou, Lou Elizondo has said, these things have been with us for a long time. Uh, but anyways, uh, let's go to this video here. Let me go full screen. On the way around the UFO, it's, it's getting closer and closer and closer. Yeah, that ain't no airplane you give a damn what you think you are and think you know about airplanes. That is not a an airplane. Let me just jump because at the end, this thing does something kind of in, uh, interesting. Anyways, let me just jump ahead here. Check this out. It has to be a UFO. Okay. It's E.T. phone and fucking home. Yeah. wonder if they got any good drugs. I don't, know. I don't need you, though. But by God, it's something going across the sky. And those guys are definitely on some good drugs. Anyways, uh, let's go to this other video here. Now, this one was taken in Mi Miami very, very recently. Check this out. Let me go full screen. Anyways, yeah, that was real quick. Uh, let's see. Let me go to this other one. Now, yeah, this one is going to be hard to see. This is another uh, graduate of the Filmmaking School of Vertical Cinematography. But uh, let me just play this thing here. Anyways, that's uh, yeah, hard to see. Definitely uh, check out the link in the description to see that one better. Uh, let's see. This one is out of Japan. Also, you know what? Uh, interesting. This only has five views, even though it's been up since November 15th. You know, I really, I know uh, YouTube really suppresses these UFO videos. So it'd be great if you guys could, uh, you know, subscribe, like, and share these things. Because I think, I think when the more people finally realize that, um, you know, we're not alone. The, I think things will finally start to change because I think, you know, we, we all need to be on the same vibrational level. And, uh, you know, I, I definitely uh, get or understand how there are a lot of people who just aren't ready to accept this information. So, you know, it's really hard to, to, to approach people and um, to talk to them about it. But, uh, you know, maybe if you share videos with them, uh, they'll come to realize it. Anyways, check this out.
Yeah, that's all this thing really does for uh, almost two minutes. But anyways, a uh, link to this will be in the description. Yeah, now this one here is an older video. Uh, let me just start it right about here. But according to this, it says on September 10th, 2014, Rick Yabera pulled into his driveway near San Diego, California around 6.45 p.m. when he noticed a sphere in the sky. A retired Department of Defense therapist who worked at Naval Base San Diego and Submarine Base Point Loma we recently spoke to him about the sighting. But let me just back up here. You can get a better look at this thing. The diameter. And I watched it for a couple of minutes, uh, anticipating that it would it would fly away or, or do something different. Rick next grabbed his camera and tripod and snapped these. The metadata matches his account, showing the images were taken over a half hour period during twilight. ISO settings and exposure times go up accordingly. Illumination on the right side of the object also matches Rick's statement that he was facing south. Look, I, I don't want to play too much of this because I know if I play any more, they'll hit me with a copyright violation. But uh, of course, the link will be in the description. Uh, you know, th these photos, they seem to be very, very clear. Where was it at? Yeah, look at that. Oh, this is an, an enhanced version submitted to MUFON 2014. That's definitely some kind of probe. But anyways, a uh, link to this will be in the description. Let me go to this video here. Yeah, now this one here, like I said, it's a minute and 25. And all you really see is this thing here until near the end when there's a, uh, a lightning flash. Actually, let me just play it from here. Yeah, you can see, well, you know what, let me just back up. In that one frame, you could definitely see something. Yeah, look at that. You can see, clearly see the outline of this thing here and with these lights on it. But, uh, you know, that's all I want to play this video. Link will be in the description. Please check it out. Uh, let's see. Now, this is an older video. I've definitely played this one before. Uh, let me just go back to or start right when it begins its change. Because at first, it's just this ball here. It's kind of actually, it's kind of out of focus. Yeah, all, all of this in here is, is uh, it's out of focus. <laughs> Okay, that's that. But uh, anyways, you know, th these are our underwater neighbors. They're not visitors. I think our government has been brainwashing us uh, into believing that there are visitors or they're from other planets and, you know, all this other nonsense about, oh, they're from the future or they're from a different dimension. No, they're not. They're, they're just other uh, living life forms that, that happen to share the planet with us. And uh, like Lou Elizondo has, has been saying, we are just now coming to realize that. Or, you know, I'm sure there are uh, a people, a handful of people, you know, within the uh, military and uh, uh, go high government uh, officials that are aware of it. But, you know, I mean, as far as the public is going, they, you know, this is now starting to come out. I mean, this is disclosure happening. Uh, as we speak, you know, th this whole notion, I think there's, you know, there's still all these Charlie Browns out there who are waiting for a head of state to make an official announcement. It's not going to happen that way. It's happening just the way it's happening now with people like Elizondo, uh, um, you know, going and talking and giving these interviews to all these people and just putting it out there that 
Do you know, I mean, it's it's no more a question of whether or not they're real. Now they're asking, who are these people? What do they want? Um, of course, I think that, you know, there's definitely people within the government, again, who know and who are in control, who, who don't want to reveal those things. But, you know, the public is is starting to learn. You know, we don't have to wait for uh, a head of state. This information is out there. You just have to be willing to go out and find it and, and present it to people. But anyways, um, check out this uh, article here about uh, a, a sighting in, in Ireland. Let's see. The first document report of a UFO or flying saucer in the United States was in 1947 when entrepreneur Kenneth Arnold claimed to see a group of nine objects flying at high speed over Mount Rainier in Washington. The same year, the Irish Defense Forces began its dossier of unexplained phenomena in the skies. But almost 300 years prior to this, 16 residents of Pawns Town in Tipperary. I'm not sure if I said that right, uh, attested to their eyewitness accounts of the divers and most strange and prodigious apparitions seen in the air. In the latest De Baruch, a rare book catalog, an extremely rare copy of this book, which recalls the sightings of something like a ship, relates the accounts given by a uh, Mc C. Hewiston and a Mr. R. Foster, along with others who saw the unidentified flying objects. Printed in 1679 on marbled boards, the good copy is listed at C1750. I don't know what that means. But anyways, yeah, they've been seeing them, you know, these objects for a long time. And uh, here's another uh, expert. This is like a, a correspondence between two people. I'm not too sure who these people are, but this is from um, Stanford.edu. It says, uh, hello, as a doctoral student in humanities, I've been spending much time reading 18th century British periodicals. In one of them, I have found a report of an unexplained phenomenon somewhere in Scotland. I leave it to your judgment and experience to decide its merits as a UFO sighting. I do not have an active interest in UFO research, though I do believe in the existence and benevolence of our space brothers. Consequently, I would appreciate your not getting back to me. All the information I have is given below, and my only desire is simply to make it available to you. Thanks. So I don't know who this person is or why you know he decided to send it to this individual. But anyways, uh, he says here, extracts of a letter from Edinburgh, September 8th. We hear from Perthshire that an uncommon phenomenon was observed on the water of Isla near Cooper Angus, preceded by a thick dark smoke, which soon dispelled and discovered a large luminous body like a house on fire, but presently after took a form something pyramidal and rolled forward with impetuosity till it came to the water of Eric, up which river it took its direction with great rapidity and disappeared a little above Blairgowry. The effects were as extraordinary as the appearance. In its passage, it carried a large cart many yards over a field of grass. A man riding along the high road was carried from his horse and so stunned with the fall as to remain senseless a considerable time. It destroyed one half of a house and left the other behind, undermined and destroyed an arch of the new bridge building at Blegerwire, immediately after which it disappeared. As few appearances of this kind ever were attended with like consequences, various conjectures have been forming concerning it. Hmm, so it sounds like this thing was maybe having some kind of mechanical issues and, uh, you know, crashed in to destroy the house. But, uh, yeah, apparently, you know, this happened here in uh, 1776. So, you know, like uh, Luis Elizondo has been hinting at in all of these interviews he's been giving, he's been giving um he's they're acknowledging that uh there there is some other intelligence living alongside with us and you know we're just now getting the technology to detect them i mean of course we've been seeing them a long time but you know we now have um actual like radar signatures and things like that that i actually think you know a lot of this uh high tech uh tracking systems were most likely built to track you know, these crafts that again, like our, that, that our military has been aware of for, for a long, long time. But anyways, uh, that is going to be it for this video. If you like things like this, please give this video a thumbs up. Please share this video. And if you're new to the channel, please subscribe. I'll have more things like this. Take care.